T2 Train Spotting is the long awaited sequel to the 90s British classic and sees the entire main cast returning as well as Danny Boyle as director. Just so you know, the plot for this movie does carry over some spoilers from the end of the first movie, so if you haven't seen the first movie, I'm just pre warning you. This movie takes place 20 years after the events of the first movie, which funnily enough is how long it has been between the release of both these movies. And at the end of the last movie, Renton, Begbie, Sick Boy and Spud all did this big, huge skag deal resulting in them earning 16 grand. However, when they were all asleep, Renton walked away with the £16,000, never to be seen again. Fast forward 20 years, and they are all in completely different places. Spud is having trouble trying to get on with life, and he can't escape the past. Sick Boy owns this uh, pub in the middle of nowhere, and he's become a lot more cynical than he used to be. Begbie, believe it or not, is in jail, and Renton is living his life in Amsterdam, until he has a heart attack and suddenly has flashbacks of his past which causes him to go back to Edinburgh and face the friends that he betrayed. Now I was quite hesitant going into this movie because the original is just so loved by many many people, myself included, and I didn't really know if a sequel was going to be any good or even necessary. But the thing that kept me going was the fact that everyone was returning, even director Danny Boyle, and he has stated in the past that he would not make Train Spotting 2 until he was 100% satisfied with the script. So I'm glad they've taken their time to make a movie that really surprised me and I actually ended up enjoying a lot more than I thought I would. Now, whereas most sequels to older movies feel very forced and unwanted, this movie does not. It feels like you're meeting an old friend again where you can basically catch up where you last left off and I think that's the highest praise I can give this movie. Now, nostalgia plays a massive part in this movie. It's one of the most important things about this movie. And they look back on what happened in the past quite a lot, which means a lot of shots from the first movie are reused. But the best thing about it is they don't do it in a very cliched flashback way. Instead, what they do is they make it and present it in a way that feels like they're reminiscing about the past rather than just thinking about it because the plot tells them to. Another thing is that T2 can go from being hilarious to emotional to disturbing to quite suspenseful in a matter of seconds and it is all works really well because of Danny Boyle's frenetic direction which is just as fast-paced and energetic as it was in the first movie. Another thing that this movie does quite a lot of, and the first one did it a bit as well, is the fact that character arcs and side plots will be started and then immediately dropped. Now, in any other movie, that would be very annoying, but in the first train spotting, and especially in this one, it works really well for some reason. And I think the reason is, is the fact that they do it in a way that mimics real life. And I mean, I've had this in the past where I'll start doing something and it just leads to nowhere. And only in the train spotting movies does it really work. Now, the only main difference I could find between this movie and the first one is the fact that the first movie has a very murky and dark look to it, whereas this one is very vibrant, colourful, and very sleek. The acting in this movie is great from everyone. You can easily tell that these are the same characters, just a lot older and slightly more jaded. Spud, I really do feel sorry for, because if you didn't feel sorry for him in the first one, you really will in this movie, because he really does, for the majority of the movie, feel like he's in the wrong place at the wrong time, and he really really does a good job of portraying this very sad looking character. You then have Sick Boy who is still the cool businessman he was in the first movie but he's slightly more cynical than he was before because of what happened in the last movie and I think Johnny Lee Miller perfectly portrayed that in his performance. And then there's Begbie who like I said in the last movie in my last review he can go from being hilarious to watch to incredibly scary in a matter of seconds. In this movie, he's straight up terrifying. 
And then you have Ewan McGregor as Renton, who is just as good as he was in the first, and has a great speech which properly explains the Choose Life speech from the first movie, um, and it doesn't feel forced or cliched. Danny Boyle and co bring their A game and it really shows, making for a very enjoyable movie that had moments that disgusted me and moments that had me laughing my arse off, which means I have to give it a 10 out of 10. I honestly didn't think it was going to get a 10, but this was honestly one of the best experiences I've had in a cinema for a very long time, and I just had to give it the full marks. Also, did I mention the soundtrack's good? It's really good, but it's nowhere near as memorable as the first movie, but still very good. So guys, that was my review for T2 Train Spotting. If you enjoyed the first movie, then I think you'll find a lot to love here. Also, like I said in my last review, I will be reviewing every Spider-Man movie per month up to the release of Spider-Man Homecoming this July. I hope you enjoyed this video, because if you did, you can give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Bye.